me welcome all of you to the 16th lecture of drilling and blasting technology course. And uh, so far uh, most of the time we have covered the different aspects of drilling, mainly in this we have covered the last classes we have discussed the details of drilling technology. And you know why we have discussed this drilling technology, because it is the most suitable way to place the explosive inside the rock mass. That means, in this if you are considering the drilling technology, this drilling technology is being taught in this course only to show you how you can place the explosive inside the rock mass, so that the explosive can be exploded for excavate the rock. That means, the ultimate objective of this course is to excavate the rock by drilling and blasting method and to place the explosive inside the rock, we have to provide some means of small excavation, small pockets and that pockets is being drilled by the use of drilling technology. So, so far all the 15 lectures is taken to make you understand how you can carry out the drilling pro process to place the explosive inside the rock mass. So, I expect that from the previous lecture you already accustomed that how you can go for the drilling and how you can place the explosive as per your wish inside the rock mass. Now, placing of explosive is not the problem inside the rock mass, but still you do not have any good knowledge how the blasting can be carried out by using the explosive. So, let us let us have some videography on that. You can see how the explosive which you cannot see previously because it is inside the rock mass. So, if you look into this see the face again there is no trace of explosive because explosives are because explosives are drilled and through this drilling explosives are placed inside the rock mass. So, we cannot see this and you place this explosive inside the rock mass then you keep yourself away from that place. So, you initiate your explosive from that remote place so that you can be safe and this explosive is being exploded if you explode the explosive, if you explode the explosive then you can see how the rocks are being fragmented on the explosion. So, that means basically blasting is the art of detonating the explosive, blasting is the art of detonating the explosive, explode the explosive while the explosives are placed judicially inside the rock mass and on release of the energy from the explosives the rocks are being fragmented. So, basically so basically we are using the explosive for exploding the rock mass. So, now let us understand what is explosive, because uh, our common sense says whatever crackers we are using that is the explosive, say which is in the mouth of the mastic is explosive, but how the explosive can be technically defined, if something is burning whether that will be called explosive, these confusions are there, if something is burning say coal is being burning, wood is being burning, but can it be called explosive, no these are not explosive, but essentially explosive should have some property and that is why this is so much devastating, so much dangerous. So, we should understand what is explosive and in doing so, I believe that you are able to understand that blasting is carried out by exploding the explosive and the moment we speak the word explosive, the common people understand that this is a chemical substance which explode if it comes in contact with a heat or flame, but 
this is the common people understanding this is not always the truth further we also understand that if it is exploded intentionally it is called blasting if it is accidentally exploded then it is called explosion so that means you are underst understanding now that explosion is the unwanted exploding of the explosive and if we are willing to do that one that is called blasting or firing say military people are carrying out firing uh, mining people carried out blasting and other people if unintentionally doing that it is called explosion so what is the learning objective of this today's class in fact today's class today's in this lecture we have to gather some idea about the rock blasting because we have seen in the video that the explosives are placed inside the rock and that by that release of that energy from that explosive we are able to blast the rock in this class we will also understand what is explosive and we will understand the historical aspect of development of explosive in fact people have spent throughout their life for improving the explosive for inventing the new explosive and those are basically the essential requirement which is asked by the industry so basically we should understand what is explosive first how it is technically called explosive then we will go into the details of the historical perspective of the development of the explosive so first let us see what is explosive as per explosive rule 2008 authorized explosive means an explosive included in the list of authorized explosive referred to the rule 6 and published by the central government from time to time in the official gadget so this is the legal term of explosive that means legally a substance is called explosive authorized explosive if it is listed in the government circular so this is the legal term and i believe that any student may not draw any conclusion from this term which one will be listed which one will not be listed then let us see at the ex what explosive act 1884 is telling about explosive explosive act 1884 tells explosive means gunpowder nitroglycerin nitroglycol gun cotton dinitrotoluin uh, trinitrotoluin picric acid dinitrophenol trinitro resorcinol cyclo trimethyl tri uh, trinitrate amine pentaerythrocal tetranitrate tetrail nitro uh, guan guanidine lead azide lead stipnate fulminate of mercury fulminate of other metals uh, nitrophenols these are the different chemicals it is listed in the explosive act 1884 or mixture of substance whether solid or liquid or gaseous used or manufactured with a view to produce a practical effect by explosion or pyrotechnic effect and includes fog signals fireworks fuses rockets percussion caps detonators cartridges ammunition of all descriptions and every adaptations or preparation of an explosive as defined in this clause so that means again it is a host of different name of mineral and also it is including those minerals which can act as the explosive matter explosion mat, uh, which can cause explosion can be considered as explosive that means if someone is looking at the technical definition of the explosive our explosive act 1884 explosive rule 2008 is unable to provide a technical good technical definition of explosive which can give some something in the mind of the student so let us see what different other researchers are telling some researchers especially uh, uh, mr uh, dr stephen miller he is uh, defining explosive as a substance that when subjected to a suitable stimuli undergoes a violent chemical decomposition 
with the evolution of heat and gas. So, basically Stephen Miller is trying to tell you that a chemical substance the moment you are giving a stimuli the stimuli may be heat, the stimuli may be shock, the stimuli may be uh, flame, the whichever it is if the stimuli is given to it, it can violently decompose and in this decomposition must be exothermic so that it will produce heat, it must be it must produce gas so that the gas will expand in the heat and create huge pressure. So, that means, it he is telling about the chemical which can be exploded to release the heat and gas and another definition may be a material containing stored chemical energy which can be rapidly released in the form of heat and high gas pressure when triggered to do so. That means, the essential requirement of an explosive which can be commercially allowed or which can be authorized to allowed for the public use must have some control over it. That means, the triggering of the explosive must be within the control limit of the user. So, the second definition which is given here, here it is told that the chemical energy that is the chemi chemical substance which is releasing the energy in form of heat and the gas pressure when it is asked. But if someone asks me, I believe that explosive may be defined in some different way and this, this definition may be explosive is a chemical substance often it may be a mixture of fuel oxidizer something like that. So, it is a chemical substance which release huge quantity of shock and gas energy instantaneously on triggering by a detonation or so. That means, it is essentially required that triggering must be within the control of the user. The chemical is there which is not only releasing the heat and gas that may also release the shock. In fact, nowadays people are trying that the explosive should be invented in such a manner the gas quantity, heat quantity may not be that much, but the shock quantity should be significant. So, that means one property of the explosive should be that it is it should release the shock. Apart from that it may release the gas energy also, it may release the uh, heat also, but all these things should be released instantaneously. In fact, uh, an explosive is so dangerous because its energy is re being released instantaneously. This part is very very important. That means, the reaction time must be less almost instantaneous so that the energy can be released instantaneously. If you go through the next, next slide probably it will be more clear to you. See, there is a candle you can see in the left side there is a candle, right side there is an explosive cartridge. So, suppose you are taking one piece of candle say 100 gram of candle and you have taken one piece of explosive 100 gram of explosive and you want to see which one is more dangerous, how much energy they are releasing and if you compare these two see their explosive reactions, see the how much uh, uh, heats are being generated, how much uh, quantity gases are generated from each and if you are trying to calculate those things, if you, you will find that the candle is generating 8 times more heat energy than an explosive of similar weight. If you measure these things again you will find out candle is generating 4 times more gas quantity than the explosive is generating. That means, the gas quantity is more in the candle, heat energy released from the candle is more, but no one is fearing to lighting the candle. Everyone light uh, can hold the candle when it is lit up no one is fearing on that, no one can use that uh, use the candle for breaking up the rocks, no one can use the candle to kill someone 
but people are using explosive to kill someone, people are using explosive to blast the rock, people are using explosive to blast the building. So, why explosive is dangerous? Because the candle is also taking 50,000 more time for this reaction. That means, 8 times more heat energy is released, but that heat energy is released in 50,000 more time duration. That means, instantaneously release of heat energy is very very insignificant in case of candle if you are considering the same for the explosive. So, that means, the explosive is dangerous because its energy is being released almost instantaneously that the reaction time is very very less. The energy stored is high, the high energy is being released almost instantaneously. So, that is why explosive is becoming so dangerous. Now, let us look into the historical perspective of the explosive. As you know gunpowder, the common use of gunpowder is in the crackers where commonly we use gunpowder, wrap it with something and then we use a flame, provide a flame and you find that gunpowder is being exploded. That means, it burns instantaneously, the heat energy released, shock energy released creates the sound and light and we enjoy that sound and light. And if you look into the history, this is the first explosive which was discovered in the third century before Christ by the Chinese people. And you know this Chinese people they usually worship the dragon etcetera. So, fire coming up from dragon for these purposes they have discovered gunpowder and they use the gunpowder for worshipping dragons etcetera. So, that was utilized by the Chinese invented by the Chinese people utilized by the Chinese people and they conceal the gunpowder technology amongst them since 12th century European stolen that one and Roger Bacon perfected the formula of gunpowder during the 12th century. So, first time this was stolen from the Chinese to the Europe and then the Europe started using the gunpowder and this time the use was different. It is not for the worshipping, this is the use of the gunpowder was carried out for the battle fighting in the battles. The first gunpowder was started using in the artilleries, where uh, that artilleries are being fired using the gunpowder. So, now the use of the gunpowder is being changed from the worshipping to the battle and later on it is transferred to the mining purpose in the 16th century. So, what is gunpowder? Let us look at that. It is basically the nitrate, either potassium or sodium nitrate mixed with the charcoal or uh, carbon or sulfur. So, to react them instantaneously and which will generate the nitrogen, carbon dioxide like that and the sulphate and uh, um, carbonate of the metals. So, that was the basic use. Basically, here the uh, charcoal is given or carbon is given uh, as the which can be uh, oxidized by the nitrate and sulfur is given for the increase the sensitivity of the gunpowder. So, basically these two are used and oxidizer is the uh, nitrate and this is very very commonly used in the old days and that was the only uh, explosive for a long period. So, gunpowder for loosening and fragmentation of rock is carried out in the uh, 17th century, uh, in fact, uh, 1647 or something like that in Europe and later on uh, it is used in throughout the world for mining purpose till some high explosives has come out and Alfred, Alfred Nobel uh, discovered the dynamite. Uh, before that, gunpowder was the only explosive which was used for loosening or fragmenting the rock. Uh, you commonly know that where the explosive are stored is called magazine. 
So, the first magazine was set for storing the explosive in 1715 in the colonial Williamsburg, Virginia, where the first magazine was set and again you remember this magazine was set as the magazine for fighting the battle while, while the battle was being carried out between the whites and the blacks in USA. So, this magazine was made to store the explosive and ammunition in the 1715. Now, this is a famous tourist spot and this is the first magazine of the world. So, I, uh, uh, I am very much interested to show you because this, uh, these are the development of the explosive, but first time the explosive made for inventing the explosive is the explosive which is called fulminating gold. It has been found while people are using gunpowder, the gunpowder has to be lit up with a flame and the moment if the gunpowder is moisty or the rainy situation, you cannot go for exploding the gunpowder. So, people found that there must be some other explosive which can be used for this type of cases where water or moisture should not be a problem. On this search, German alchemist, he has uh, accidentally developed the first man-made explosive that is fulminating gold, which is not only the man-made explosive, by strength this is very, very high explosive as compared to the gunpowder. But he has developed this in 1585, but the problem was found that though the explosive is developed, but how to use that explosive was not able to be known to the all the persons. So, no people got that idea that fulminating gold or mercury gold which have developed is explosive, but the commercial use of that explosive was not possible. So, still gunpowder was the explosive used being used in the mine but people are in search of different explosive. So, nitroglycerin was discovered in 1846. So, there is a long gap after fulminating gold which is accidentally discovered by the alchemist. Uh, you know this alchemist they were searching for the gold by mixing different chemicals. So, in that searching he developed that explosive, but that explosive use of that explosive was not possible that time only it was in the knowledge domain that that explosive is possible, but nitroglycerin was discovered as the explosive material and people has discovered it again they could not use the explosive for their purpose. And this is the chemical formula of the nitroglycerin and it has been found that if a shock is provided to this nitroglycerin, nitroglycerin disintegrate chemically reacted almost instantaneously in that shock and it explodes to form carbon dioxide, uh, water, nitrogen and oxygen almost instantaneously releasing huge quantity of shock. And the shocks are such high it killed a number of persons. Uh, that means, if someone is having nitroglycerin, a test tube full of nitroglycerin as it is liquid and drop that test tube from its hand to onto the table or onto the floor, all the persons standing nearby may die on that explosion. It is such devastating explosive. So, anyway nitroglycerin is discovered, but still the problem is that no one knows how to use this nitroglycerin for the commercial purpose, the commercial use. Still that is the challenge to the explosive users and explosive users try to try their hard to develop some means to use the this type of explosives. Again trinitro uh, toluene that is TNT was developed in 1863 by the German chemist Joseph Wilbrandt and again it has been found this is also very explosive and this this produce on explosion it produce nitrogen water 
carbon monoxide or oxides of carbon and unburned carbon molecule or oxides of different oxides of carbon, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide like that on chemical reaction releasing huge shock, but then also it has been found none of this nitroglycerin, none of this TNT are sensitive to flame, but they are sensitive to shock. So, if the shock is provided to these explosives, they can be initiated otherwise they cannot be initiated by the flame and no one knows the technology how to initiate these explosives while it is intend to be used for the commercial purpose. So, that is the difficulty though the explosives are developed, the use of the explosives are not known to the human being. Especially there is another problem with the nitroglycerin that it is liquid. In fact, it is very good explosive, very high energy explosive, but the transportation of this is also very difficult. TNT is a powdery form that is not that much difficult transportation, but the initiation of the TNT is difficult. Nitroglycerin initiation is not difficult because a little bit shock can initiate it. But anyway, none of these are within the control of the human being, so they cannot use these things uh, in as per their wish in the commercial purpose, in the industrial purpose. So, complete Europe was in search of some techniques which can be used for the commercial use of these developed explosives. We will continue this historical perspective of the development of explosive, we will know how this can be how this can be utilized, how this can be utilized uh, as per the intention of the human being. In the next class, we will discuss all these things, but before that I wish all who, who are uh, uh, attending this course should have some reading on these reference books, Gustafsson books, uh, Bhandari books and uh, G. K. Prasant's books. These books so that they can have some idea about the different explosives, composition of these explosives and mainly the properties of these explosives. See, so far whatever we have discussed, you can see the first one is the gunpowder. Gunpowder is not that much dangerous, of ex dangerous explosive because you people are also using that explosive, you people are also using that explosive in, in during the uh, while you are using the crackers. So, it is not that much dangerous, if it is exploded in your hand also it is not creating a little bit burn may be created, but not that much danger thing occur. So, its effect is limited, but it is a it is a it is a weak explosive. So, gunpowder is a weak explosive that is why those who are willing to use explosive for commercial purpose by for breaking the rocks, for breaking the uh, structures they want some high energy explosive, high shock energy which can be utilized for that and that is why they have developed different explosives TNT, nitroglycerin, fulminating gold, but they yet not achieve any control over using those explosives. In fact, during that time all a number of scientists who are uh, using who uh, are uh, working with nitroglycerin, TNT, fulminating gold diet on experimentation because though, uh, those exploded immaturely and killed the all those scientists. That is the huge loss to the scientific community while they are uh, they lo uh, lost their life during the uh, scientific investigations, but still people have carried out and finally win over the technology which we will discuss in the next class. Thank you.